Real quick, if you're watching this video on the day it comes out, then I'm currently live on this channel as part of the Operation Reindeer charity event organized by my friend Icy Richard. I'm playing through Pokemon Fire Red Crowd Control, and I'm not stopping until the game is beat. If you want to mess with me and support a good cause while you're at it, then hop in. More info is in the description down below. This channel has always been about science. And according to Plato, science is perceiving. After all, it is only in perceiving the world around us that the world itself becomes knowable and real. But can we really trust our powers of perception? Can we be sure that our eyes are not merely being deceived? According to your eyes, I am nothing more than a collection of pixels on a screen. But can you be sure that I was ever more than that? Or am I just a mere illusion? Can we be certain that our world isn't a mere illusion, conjured by tricks and sounds whose source has eluded our grasp of understanding? As it turns out, yes, you can be sure. Hi folks, I'm Charlie, and today we're talking about Five Nights at Freddy's most contentious piece of tech prior to 2021. The sound illusion discs were introduced in the original Five Nights at Freddy's novel series, first appearing in the Twisted Ones, and again later in the Fourth Closet, where they can use sound to make people see spooky monsters, and boy oh boy did people really hate them. The technology in FNAF has always been ahead of its time, bipedal robots in the 80s anyone? But somehow, these seem to be a step too far. But is that really true? Are these magic discs really that much more far-fetched than springlock suits or rogue AI that can take over your brain? Or are they more grounded in real-world science than any of us gave them credit for? Today, I break down the science behind the sound illusion discs and prove that they're not as dumb as we all thought though they are still kind of dumb. Richard, hit that intro. For those who aren't super familiar, sound illusion discs are described as working as such. They emit a rapidly changing series of high-pitched frequencies that are outside the range of human hearing, but can still be perceived by the subconscious. These sounds confuse the brain into making you see things that aren't actually real. In the books, the main thing they're used for is making the titular twisted animatronics look like scary monsters or regular friendly animatronics depending on the situation, but in the end, spoilers I guess, when the discs are turned off, the twisted animatronics are revealed to be nothing more than bare endoskeletons being disguised by these sounds. So basically, these discs use sound that you can't actually hear, but sort of can hear, to make a specific object look like a different specific object. And they wondered why we all hated them. These discs also have an effect on cameras. Anything being cloaked by one will appear blurry in photographs and videos, and aside from the whole hallucinating thing, prolonged exposure to these sounds can make you feel nauseous, but they're otherwise relatively harmless. So all we need to do is try and find some real world science that can explain all of this. Oh boy. I guess let's just start from the top with high-pitched noises that you can't hear, but your brain can still hear. What does that even mean? Well, the pitch of a sound is related to its frequency, or how fast that sound wave is waving. A higher frequency, measured in hertz, correlates to a higher pitch. Humans can typically hear sounds ranging from 20 hertz on the low end to upwards of 20 kilohertz on the high end. This differs from person to person and worsens as you age, but in general, if a sound has a frequency higher than 20 kilohertz, we can't hear it. However, studies have shown that our brains 
do experience a change in electrical activity when exposed to sounds of 22 kilohertz and above. What does that mean? It means that FNAF was actually spot on. There are high frequency sounds that our brain can detect and react to without hearing it. Well, well, they were spot on about this one thing. They were wrong about pretty much everything else. You'll see. This phenomenon is called the hypersonic effect, and apparently it's more pronounced when you layer inaudible high-frequency sounds on top of regular audible frequencies. As an example, according to a study published in the National Library of Medicine called Inaudible High-Frequency Sounds Affect Brain Activity, colon, hypersonic effect, a real page turner that one, let me tell you. They found that people tend to find music with high inaudible frequencies layered on top more pleasant to listen to than the same song without them, even if they sounded functionally identical. I would play some of these for you as a little experiment, but the effects of exposure can vary greatly, ranging from mild annoyance to ear pain and temporary hearing loss to, well, nothing at all. Just to be safe, I won't play any of these, though I am happy to report that while researching possible side effects, I didn't find a single reported case of someone experiencing any sort of visual hallucination or change to their perception at all when exposed to any of these sounds. Because that would be actually insane. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt, but I just found out about this super cool new feature on YouTube that I want to try out. I might be too much of a YouTube peasant to have access, but I'm doing a little experiment. If you're watching this in full screen right now, then hit escape and keep an eye on that button below this video. You know the one, you know the one. All right, ready? If you're enjoying this video, then hit that subscribe button. Eh? Eh? Pretty sick, right? Or super disappointing. And now, at this point, if you give it a click, something super cool should happen. I, you know what? You know what? I won't spoil it. Just give it a shot. You fool! You fell for the classic trap, and now you're subscribed to the channel! The mastermind strikes again! Ugh. So we've run into a bit of a dead end with the high frequency sounds, but interestingly, if we hop to the other end of the spectrum, sounds that are too low for us to hear, then we find something very sinister indeed. There is one frequency. One specific, impossibly low note of 18.98 hertz, just barely below the range of human hearing. This sound, if you can even call it that, has been documented to induce feelings of dread and panic in any who listen to it. People will see shadows moving around at the edge of their vision, only to look and realize that there's nothing there. This unholy tone has been dubbed the ghost frequency, because it, it actually has nothing to do with ghosts at all, but some super gullible people thought that it was like the spirits of the dead trying to communicate with them or something, and the name just sort of stuck. But yes, the ghost frequency is a real documented phenomenon, and everything that I just said is true, though I hate to burst your bubble, but it's not nearly as spooky as it sounds. The exact reason why people experience these sensations when exposed to this specific frequency is up for debate, but from my research, the most commonly accepted explanation is that it closely matches the resonant frequency of the human body. So this sound will subtly vibrate your body, causing you to shake ever so slightly, which might give you a chill. It might make your chest feel a little bit tighter, making it a little harder to get a full breath which is where the feelings of dread and panic come from. It can also slightly vibrate your eyes within their sockets, gross, not anything dangerous, but enough to seemingly make shadowy figures dance at the edge of your vision. Unlike high-pitched sounds, I couldn't find any harmful side effects of this sound outside of, you know, the whole dread thing, so I'll slowly fade it in. I've heard that it works better with headphones, but again, the effects vary greatly from person to person, regardless of your setup. Ready? Can you feel?
feel it? The hair standing up on the back of your neck? The shadows dancing around at the edge of your vision? That feeling of dread, anxiety, panic rising through you? I don't know, I'll be honest, I don't feel anything when I listen to it, but some people do. What about you? Interestingly, this sound comes up way more often in nature than you might think. A lot of historically haunted places like old hotels, decrepit mansions, stuff like that, oftentimes it's discovered that there was just like an old air conditioning unit or some pipes grinding together under the foundation that are emitting this frequency, which is why so many people get freaked out when they go in. And apparently, certain animals like tigers have been known to emit this low-pitched frequency in their growls to intimidate their prey while hunting, causing them to freeze up in fear so they're easier to catch. In case tigers weren't terrifying enough, they just had to throw paralyzing roars in there. At a glance, this seems super promising. A sound that we cannot ordinarily hear, albeit a low-pitched sound instead of a high one, that can fill you with dread and even cause visual hallucinations? Great! Sound illusion discs are solved. Except for a few problems. As you probably noticed during our little experiment, the effects of this sound vary greatly from person to person, and most people don't even react at all. It can cause visual alterations, let's say, but they are completely random, everybody's seen something different, and nothing as crystal clear as a full robot bear. It's also important to note that these visions occur due to the vibrations of our eyes, so it wouldn't make sense for the vision to be locked to a specific object like the endoskeletons in the book. It would, it would just follow you wherever you happen to be looking. All right, so uh, it looks like the whole sound angle has turned up a whole lot of nothing. Uh, sure, there are sounds outside the range of human hearing that can have subtle effects on the brain and body, but nothing even remotely close to the sort of controlled visual hallucinations that we see the sound illusion discs produce. But that got me thinking, perhaps we're approaching this from the wrong angle. We know that sound can't cause these sort of illusions, but then again, can anything? Is an object appearing as something completely different even possible? Or is this idea doomed from the very start? In one last ditch effort to make these things make even a lick of sense, I went back to the research grind and came across a little thing called hypnopompic hallucinations. Or in layman's terms, your old pal, the sleep paralysis demon. Statistically speaking, a few of you are intimately familiar with the concept of a sleep paralysis demon, but for those who have never experienced it, sleep paralysis is something that can occur when you are abruptly woken from REM sleep. While in this deep sleep state, your body paralyzes itself to give your muscles some rest. But sometimes, when you quickly wake up from this state, it takes a couple of minutes for your body to catch up to the fact that you're not still sleeping and some weird things can happen before it does. Not only can people not move most of their body, but many also report seeing distorted figures or demons as they're often described in the low light of their bedrooms. These can be wholly new apparitions, but more often something already in the room, like say a lamp, an alarm clock, that bare endoskeleton you have lying in the corner, will become twisted into a nightmarish humanoid monster in the mind of the sleeper. Right? Right? Pretty spot on! Except for all the ways when it's not, but we'll get back to that later! I don't know about you, but one question that I had while researching this was, why demons? Like, our brain misinterpreting something that we see in the shrouded dim light in this strange half-sleep state? That makes sense. But why do so many people report seeing demons and monsters specifically? Well, it's up for debate, but it's generally believed that people see these scary demons for the same reason that people have nightmares. Anxiety, stress, these things that plague your mind while you're awake stay with you when you're asleep and can manifest as these scary apparitions. It's also been theorized that people are inclined to see humanoid demons specifically because of something we all possess called facial pareidolia. 
Did I say that right? Parad Paradolia. Humans are really good at spotting faces and reading them for emotions and facial cues. Sometimes a little too good to the point where we see faces in places where they aren't there. So in the dark, half-dreaming state, that clock might start to look a little like a twisted, shadowy face. Uh, heck, I've even seen some people theorize that these apparitions don't look like demons, but rather the classic look that we associate with demons came from these hypnopompic hallucinations. But now, let's bring that back in with what we learned before. We know that the ghost frequency can induce feelings of anxiety and dread, and anxiety can lead to the sleep paralysis demons manifesting. Right? Right? We're starting to see the connections? The sound leads to stress. The stress leads to the demons. I mean, it, this only works when someone is in a very, very specific, difficult to replicate state of being both awake and asleep. And in the books, it's used on people who are very much fully awake. So that, I mean, that doesn't really make any sense, does it? Ah, but what about Five Nights at Freddy's 4, which features a kid in his room being attacked by the nightmare animatronics, which have long been theorized to be using these same sound illusion discs to alter their appearance, very much analogous to the twisted animatronics from the books. I know in a recent story they said that the nightmares use hallucinogenic gas because we bullied them too much about the sound discs, but think about it. A kid is in his room in the middle of the night when he's abruptly woken from a dead sleep by a sound in the hallway. The footsteps of an animatronic emitting a low frequency sound that he can't quite perceive. The ghost frequency, which piques his anxiety. This feeling causes his half-asleep brain to see these ordinary animatronics as twisted, nightmarish versions of themselves. But as time goes on and he slowly regains his wits, he starts to see through the illusions to the bare endoskeleton beneath. And then he immediately gets up and closes the door so the whole sleep paralysis theory doesn't actually doesn't actually hold up at all. Look, I'm working with what I got here. You want the truth? Scott made up something absolutely insane and let the rest of us do the work of making it make sense. All right? Look, unlike my past forays into weird FNAF tech, there is no real science-backed answer that can explain all of the sound illusion disc's weird abilities. Uh, heck, I haven't even mentioned the camera thing because that makes absolutely zero sense. But then again, Nothing in sci-fi ever makes that much sense. A lightsaber blade stopping after a certain point, instant teleporters from Star Trek, animatronics from the 80s that can walk around on their own, none of these make that much sense when you think about it, but there's enough real world science sprinkled in there that our imaginations can fill in the gaps. And from that perspective, maybe the sound illusion discs are in the same boat. Maybe they're just as cool as a lightsaber. Nope, I can't even say it with a straight face. I can't do it. Sound illusion discs do have a backing in real world science. It's just some very obscure real world science that I'm pretty sure Scott lucked his way into. But in summary, with some sci-fi pushing of boundaries, here is exactly how the sound illusion discs could work. They emit a series of sounds just outside the range of human hearing, both on the high end and the low end, not just high-pitched sounds like the book suggests. If these sounds are layered on top of each other, since that typically increases the hypersonic effect, it would allow these sounds to easily influence your brain, even if you can't hear them. These sounds can alter the mood of the listener. Remember, high-pitched sounds makes music sound more pleasant, while the low-pitched ghost frequency fills the listener with anxiety. These moods can change the quality of their hypnopompic hallucinations. High-pitched sounds can make them see happier, friendly animatronics, while low-pitched sounds would make them appear demonic and evil. The only real logical leap that we need to make is assuming that hypnopompic hallucinations could occur in someone who is fully awake and not in a state of sleep paralysis, which admittedly is a pretty big jump, but this is the same story about ghost kids possessing high-tech robots made by a crazy person, so you know, 
I'll let you decide where you draw that line. Now, I bet there's only one question left on everybody's mind. No need to flood the comments with it. I already know what you're going to ask. When are you going to do Fazgoo? A huge thank you to everyone who chose to support me on Patreon, including Alakazam, Ethan Furlano, and Sherry and Mark. If you all were a frequency, you'd be the highest. Because those are... Those are the good ones. Those are... Make you feel good. Should've, should've written this one out beforehand. <laughs>